Alan West, Congressman, I'm, how are you, sir? I'm offended. I'm turning <laughs> down to the NAACP, CDC, I know. I know. Al Sharpton, I Jesse Jackson. I'm yeah. with you. Merry I'm Christmas. With you. How are you guys doing? Very good, sir. How are you? I'm doing well, and uh, I guess uh, I had to finally disagree with you to get you to talk to me, Glenn. <laughs> you I been... talk to you anytime, Alan. You yeah. know that I, I am a fan of yours. No, absolutely right. And, and I think this is a good discussion for us to have. Okay. So. I want to talk to you about uh, the, uh, the bill. bill. Yeah, the, se- the Senate bill that is now over in the House and being debated. Yeah. Uh, and it is the um, the authorization for the use of military force. Yeah, AUMF. Right here in the here in the homeland, mm-hmm. military force. Well, it's not so much the military force, but let me uh, just kind of give everyone an understanding of the process we're in right now. Okay. It's the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2012, and I was uh, one of three freshmen that was uh, incredibly uh, enabled to be one of the conferees. So, as a matter of fact, today we will have our first real uh, good session on conferencing the two, the House and the Senate bills together, so that we can come to a uh, an agreement and so that we can authorize uh, national defense for next year. Now, this is the thing that we have to look at, Glenn, is that we've got to understand that the 21st century battlefield is completely different from any battlefield that we've contended with uh, ever. And when I think about some of the things that have been happening in our country, whereby, you know, just last week we have an administration that says that the shooting that Major Nadal Hassan did, which was without a doubt an Islamic jihadist attack, is workplace violence. I think we've got to get serious about the fact that we do have homegrown terrorism and homegrown jihadism that is happening here in the United States of America. Uh, we can refine the language in Senate Bill 1687. But if we continue to see uh, Americans such as al Alaki and Samir Khan that are going to uh, start vomiting sedition and taking up arms against our country, we're going to have to be tougher with but, that. Hang on just a second. What we're doing is we're trying to fix something that, um, in the first place, um, we're so far away from from this in common sense, as you said, um, Hassan, they call it workplace violence. Yes. I don't know if you saw the shooting that happened in Hollywood, California this weekend, but there are eyewitnesses on tape that say the guy was st- screaming Allah Akbar as he was firing a gun point blank, just coming up to people and just shooting them. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, you can say that we're so far away from but there are those of us that understand that this is happening. And we've got to bring this to the forefront because if not, we will get down to a, a, a position where, much like Europe, I mean, we are being held hostage in our own country. And so I think that when you look at uh, Major Nadal Hassan, when you look at Carlos Bledsoe, who shot the two soldiers there at the Little Rock recruiting station, as you know, uh, Private Long, his father was up here uh, testifying before a Joint Homeland Security um, uh, Committee last week. You know, we've got to start looking at these things piece by piece. And, and I'm not talking about, you know, foolishness like uh, we saw during the uh, the Clinton administration where we go out to the branch, the Vidians or Ruby Ridge and things That's of that where nature. That's where it leads. That's where it leads. Well, I think that one of the most important things that we have to start understanding as well is elections have consequences, and we have to get the right type of leadership up here in Washington, D.C., that understands where that line is, and we don't start uh, all of a sudden just saying Bubba, who has, you know, uh, three shotguns, is a terrorist. Uh, but I think that right now, when you have such a porous border like we have in the United States, and we know that Hezbollah and Al Shabaab are coming into this country, they're being aided and abetted by uh, some American citizens, and we need to have some real tight, uh, you know, rules and laws to make sure that the American people are protected against this. Or else you're going to see more instances uh, of these quote-unquote uh, lone wolves or, or whatever they want to call it, like the New York Times Square Bomber, who clearly said, you know, America is my enemy, and, uh, you know, he wished that uh, the bomb had gone off. Let me play um, uh, Rand Paul here and what he says about this bill. My well-intentioned colleagues' admonitions in defending provisions of this defense bill say that we should give up certain rights, the right to due process. Their legislation would arm the military with the authority to detain indefinitely, without due process or trial, people suspected of an association with terrorism. These would include American citizens apprehended on American soil. I want to repeat that. We are talking about people who are merely suspected of terrorism or suspected of committing a crime, 
and have been judged by no court, we are talking about American citizens that could be taken from the United States mm. and sent to a camp at Guantanamo Bay and held indefinitely. Well, first thing, I would uh, hope that we could conference out the language suspected. But then, uh, you know, I will tell you, you're looking at a guy I did not vote for the uh, Patriot Act to be uh, extended because I found some uh, very serious problems with that. And I think that when you look at someone like Samir Khan and Awalaki, I mean, we did not, uh, should we have brought those people back to have a trial? Uh, you know, this is a different type of battlefield, and I think he has to understand that. So I, I believe that when you I have think if a you're, person... I think if you're an American citizen, mm -hmm. yes. I think if you're an American citizen here in the United States, yes. Well, then, well, then when I look at, you know, Major Nadal Hassan, to me, committed a terrorist act. And I he think... is an American citizen. He created it he, uh, and did it here in the United States put his ass in front of a judge and 12 of his peers. You disagree? Uh, well, I would rather him going through a military tribunal down at Guantanamo Bay because one of the things is I think he did the most heinous of crimes in that he was a member of our armed services. He took a note to this Constitution. He turned his gun against fellow uh, Americans and also soldiers. But, that's, but then, again, that's military. If it's somebody else and he's not military... Well, then, yeah, but, 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 Glenn, you got to understand that this battlefield, I mean, it is about non, non-state, non-uniform religious, and, and you're talking about, look at uh, John Walker Lynn. I mean, I have problems with the mm -hmm. fact that John Walker Lynn, who took up arms against Americans and uh, was captured over there in, you know, Taliban country, we bring him back over and we have a, uh, you know, a civil court trial for him. Oh, I no, I, see there, I... You could you could try him on the battlefield over there. Okay. If you left you left the United States, you're actively engaged on the other side. Our troops come in. You're on the other side. We shoot you or try you there. I, well, I have no I'm, problem. I'm not, with that. I'm not saying that we should you know go out and have the military patrol in our streets and shooting people. That's not what I'm saying. But I think that when you start to have American citizens that are developing car bombs or like the young man in Massachusetts who is developing model airplane bombs to fly into the uh, to the Pentagon. But we won't even admit that that um, radicalized Islam. Um, is, is even an Absolutely. enemy or a now threat. Now we're talking about the real root cause of right, the problem. But, but until, yes. until you would do that, what you're doing is you're giving this force to let someone well, else shape whatever the enemy is. That's see, not that's, good. And see, that's, that's the root cause of the problem. I think that we have to come to an understanding that we are in a war against radical Islamic totalitarianism. We need to have committed and convicted leadership that will explain that and talk about what it is to the American people, and then you draw that line. So, Alan, given that, given that we haven't even defined very well the and enemy now, and who terrorists are. our tail. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, don't you need to define that first and then and get the suspected out of there? Be, otherwise, you'll be imprisoning right-wing American citizens. Yeah, I don't... I don't, I don't or, like if, if, or with the wrong progressive president, you'll be doing it to the left. Yeah, yeah. and I don't, yeah. Like the, I don't like the word suspected, and that's why I say we have this... ...conference process so that we can get that, uh, that language correct. But I, I think that... You would know, you vote for the bill if suspected doesn't come out of there? No, I probably would not. And that's why, like I said, we're in this conference process. I would, I would like to see that language cleaned up. Now, but, but, one of the but, strongest but, but. one of the strongest constitutionalists that I know in um, he's a, he's a new guy as well um, is uh, Mike Lee, and mm -hmm. Mike Lee is is dead set against this. It's my understanding that Mike is right. I know yeah, he, he voted, voted against, against it. it. Yeah, voted against it. Um, uh, have you discussed anything with? Uh, have you have you reached out to the other side, the people who are dead set against it, and 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 can you at least understand their? Well, I, I, I do understand. And like I said, the, the, the word suspected is something that I hope we can clean up. Uh, we've only had a, a brief introductory meeting of this conference. We're having another meeting uh, this evening on it. And, uh, you know, once again, we'll continue to try to clean it up. And we have a pre-meeting before that meeting. But, but again, I think that right now we're – you and I are debating the, the, the smaller issue. The greater issue is when will we have leadership in this country – that can clearly identify and articulate who this enemy is so that we can have the right uh, means by which we can protect the American people because uh, America is part of this battlefield. we got to come to that understanding sooner or later. 
Uh, Alan, you know how much I respect you, and uh, I really do. And I think you're one of the good guys. I think you're one of the guys uh, I appreciate everything you've done on the battlefield. I appreciate the stands you've taken. I've had dinner with you and your wife, so I, I mean this with all respect. I, I'm, I just, I can't go down the road with you on this one. Um, but I, I respect you and I appreciate your point of view. Well, I, I understand that, but I guess I, I'm looking at this from a, if I can put it in a military term, a strategic, uh, vision instead of, you know, right down to a tactical vision. I, I clearly, get what people are concerned about, especially yourself. I clearly understand that if you put certain powers in the hands of, of executives that uh, don't have the best intentions or have a clear ideological agenda, it can be turned on the American people. Yep. But that's why I As, hope, that's why I hope and pray two things, that America can once again get real leaders in this country and real leaders that understand the complexities of this new battlefield and make sure that we protect the American people. That's, that's my greatest concern, because right now I can tell you that if what you just said about what happened in Los Angeles uh, and Hollywood, we're going to see more of that. Oh, yeah, we are. We are. But, but again, you haven't seen that reported anywhere. Nobody, the American people, the problem is, is we won't deal with the truth. Mm -hmm. And so we allow whoever is in charge, be it Republican or Democrat, yeah. to define what we're doing and define the enemies. And that is extraordinarily dangerous. We are crossing all boundaries that our founders warned us on. And as I go back to George Washington, uh, government is fire. And as long as you always treat it as fire, mm -hmm. that's fine. If, if the, if, if the fire controls you, you're in trouble, and that's yeah. that's where we're headed. But I think our founders, and, and uh, absolutely brilliant man, but I don't know if our founders would have ever conceived uh, this complex of a battlefield in which we find ourselves I engaged in. I tell you that I disagree. I happen to have two books that I just pulled out and showed Pat the other day that he had never seen. Two old books from the founders. Well, you cheating? The, I mean, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you uh, <laughs> and I'll have I'll show them to you, Alan. They are called. They are the collection of quote conspiracies during the American Revolution, and and the, it names names who to go pick up, why they had to go pick them up, and what their penalty was. And mainly, what they did was say, "You are an enemy of our cause." You need to move. You can. You just go someplace else. But you're not here anymore. Um, and it was. It was very well thought out. And uh, well, that would be a great thing for us to do. But then it comes right back to what we were discussing. You don't have people that are willing to stand up and say that. Right now, we we have a movement that is more than capable, more than willing to take you know our First Amendment right, the freedom of uh, speech, freedom of religion, and they turn it upside down on us, and they're out there proselytizing sedition against our own country. I know, I know. And, and what but are that, people doing? That requires that requires leadership, and you're right on that. Let's not just let's, let's not let's not give the keys to faceless leaders that we we haven't found yet um i i can't wait to see what you do to clean it up when do you expect to vote on this uh probably well definitely before you know the end of the year hopefully mm. we can get this knocked out within the next 10 days okay before we go away for christmas so Congre uh, I congressman i i beg you to stay on your knees while you do this i beg you to stay on your knees glenn i'm always on my knees i know knees. i know i know i appreciate it yeah. god bless you congressman god be with you and merry christmas merry christmas we'll uh we'll uh watch for the uh uh, the updated version. America, this is critically important that you take a stand on this one way or another. Critically important. Um, big government is, it could change hands into another hands of another big government. Um, and uh, boy, we're giving away all the keys. We're giving the keys to the armory and all of our defenses. Be very careful.